All right, listen up. AI Cave Johnson here. We need to have a talk about hyperspace ramming. Some of you are confused about what it is and how it works. Not me, though. I'm never confused because I've paid the smartest eggheads to work for me. And while they may have trouble talking to women, they sure as hell can explain science to anyone. Uh, I mean, uh, they, they can't explain science to women because of that whole not being able to talk to women thing we just talked about. Anyway, let's get started. First off, just what the heck is hyperspace? Well, let's see what the nerds I pay say it is. Hyperspace is an alternate dimension that could only be reached by traveling at or faster than the speed of light. While in hyperspace, you are able to pass through objects that are in real space without colliding into them. You can exit hyperspace by slowing down below the speed of light, or you can get pulled out of it by passing too close to an object with a strong gravitational pull such as a planet, black hole, or even an artificial gravity generator. Now, if you're like me, you might be wondering what the hell is going on with the stars there. Well, the boys in the lab tell me that's called pseudo-motion. Basically, as your ship starts to make the jump to light speed, it's what causes the stars and planets to look like they are moving right before you make the jump. So there we go. That's it. Now that you know what hyperspace is, let's talk about hyperspace ramming. So what is hyperspace ramming? Well, it's when you ram something as you try to jump into hyperspace. Not while in hyperspace, but before you enter hyperspace. Remember, if you enter hyperspace, you will travel through objects in real space and not hit them. Now, none of this would be possible without hyperspace engines, which allows a ship not only to achieve faster than light speed, but also keeps the mass and energy profile of the ship constant. This is extremely important because the reason actual light speed travel is impossible is that as you get closer to the speed of light, your mass and the energy required to achieve light speed increases exponentially towards infinity. This is why actual light speed travel is impossible, because it would require an infinite amount of energy to actually reach the speed of light. But, as you see here in Star Wars, they created their hyperdrives to prevent this increase of mass and thus keeping the required energy to stay constant. So in Star Wars, as you approach the speed of light, your mass stays the same, and so does the energy required to get there. So let's take a look at what Admiral Holdo did. Kaboom! Now, that is lucky. Had she been further away, she would have entered hyperspace and passed right through them without causing any damage. Had she been closer, she wouldn't have had the same velocity, and while she would have still damaged it, she wouldn't have been able to break through the ship and cause all that shrapnel. She managed to hit the supremacy at the perfect moment, which was right before she entered hyperspace, so she was going at the maximum velocity. Think about that. She hit the supremacy with the mass of a large capital ship, going almost the speed of light. That is what caused such a huge explosion and resulting shrapnel. Not to mention, had General Hux decided to get his head out of his butt and actually fire on Holdo, they could have easily destroyed her. It's empty. They're just trying to pull our attention away or at least disabled the hyperdrive engines before she was able to jump. The rebel flagship is disabled, my lord. I'd say you have a one in a million chance of pulling this off. So why hasn't anyone weaponized it? Because it's a stupid idea, with very little effective use that even I think costs way too much. I mean, have you seen the stuff I've wasted money on? But let's say you don't want to waste a ship. You just want to use an asteroid with a hyperdrive attached to it. Okay, well, you're still going to need a very large and very expensive hyperdrive to do that. You're not moving an asteroid with an X-Wings engine, that's for sure. So now you are flying around with your very large asteroid that costs slightly less than a freighter because of the expensive hyperdrive. So you hyperspace in, and then as you get ready to launch, boom. Yep, turns out turbo lasers make short work of asteroids. Now I know what you're going to say, but... Why don't we make a smaller hyperspace ram that moves fast and can avoid turbo laser fire? Congratulations. You just created a missile, idiot. Sure, it's a missile that can go fast, but it's not going to be that more destructive than a missile with a highly explosive payload. And if you think you're smart by just replacing the explosive with an incredibly dense material like tungsten, well, guess what? That's not going to take out star destroyers either. Without that explosive payload, it just becomes a needle and would... Poke holes in ships instead of blowing them up. A ship with holes in it can still shoot back at you. That's, of course, assuming that you manage to hit your target or don't get blown up while trying to hit it. By the way, for that tungsten missile to even work, you need a hyperdrive 
powerful enough to move that much mass. So you are right back to square one, requiring a massive hyperspace engine to launch it. Even then, the missile is just a sitting duck until it jumps, unless you add a sublight drive, which again is going to have to be capital class to move that much mass. Which means it won't be maneuverable enough to avoid turbo laser fire. Are you seeing a pattern here? Now I know some circuit brain out there is going to leave a comment about how as you get to the speed of light, the mass would increase and make the explosion more powerful. Therefore, you could destroy a planet or Death Star with a ship no larger than an A-wing. We talked about this, remember? Hyperdrives keep the mass of the object constant. Otherwise, you can't go to the speed of light. Let's talk about the next problem. When would you use this? The two times we see this used against a ship are in The Last Jedi and in The Rise of Skywalker. In The Last Jedi, it's incredibly effective because the impact creates a ton of shrapnel moving at close to the speed of light, shredding the Star Destroyers following in a wedge formation. Key takeaway there, the Star Destroyers are following in a wedge formation. That's not something that happens a lot in Star Wars. Even after all of that, it still didn't destroy all of the Star Destroyers. There were a few that were completely untouched. It's pretty rare we even see that many Star Destroyers together in the first place, so at best you would take out one Star Destroyer. The other time we see it is at the end of Episode 9, we see a lone ship has hyperspaced rammed a Star Destroyer. Look at that little guy. He's excited because he knows he's eating good tonight. No, seriously, those guys eat humans. Vicious little bastards. This is after the Resistance kill Palpatine and stop the other Star Destroyers from taking off. This feels like a bit of a waste, really. I mean, the war's over. I mean, maybe someone should have space Skype them and let them know they already won. So using this against Star Destroyers is a bit of waste, since the odds of you hitting multiple Star Destroyers is one in a million. But what about using it on the Death Star or Starkiller base? Those are really big targets, and obviously taking that out with a hyperspace ram would be a good use of resources. In theory, it's a good idea. But let's take a look at the Death Star. What about if you use a large capital ship? Remember A New Hope? The Death Star briefing? The battle station is heavily shielded and carries a firepower greater than half the star fleet. Its defenses are designed around a direct, large-scale assault. A small, one-man fighter should be able to penetrate the outer defense. Yeah, it turns out you can't get a capital ship close enough to the Death Star before it would be destroyed. Oh, then let's say you try to hit the core with, say, a tungsten missile or just a single X-wing. Well, you aren't going to hit it. The core is 70 kilometers from the surface, so the chances of reaching a target through 70 kilometers of Dura Steel ain't happening. It's going to be stopped, or its course is going to end up changing as it plows through 70 kilometers of Dura Steel. Heck, after 20 kilometers of ramming through Dura Steel, all that kinetic energy it's generating by hitting wall after wall is going to generate so much heat, it's going to be completely melted by that point. You would never make it close enough to the core to even touch it. Even if you managed to damage it, the Empire would still be able to repair, and then they would add more defenses to it, thus making it impossible for the Rebels to ever attack it like that again. But all this is silly, because remember, they managed to take out the Death Star with an X-Wing firing two proton torpedoes anyway. As for Starkiller Base, well, that's a whole planet with a planetary shield. No hyperspace ram is getting through that. Now, once they took down the shield, sure it could work since the weapon is just out in the open. That is, if you manage to damage all the thermal oscillators. But again, this was already destroyed with some X-wings and proton torpedoes. <laughs> Let's try one more hypothetical here. Let's say you found a way to weaponize hyperspace ramming that was cheap and easy to deploy. Well, hyperspace ramming is easy to stop. We already talked about how easy it is to shoot large targets and disable them. But let's say you manage to slip one through and take out an entire fleet of Star Destroyers. Well, that's it then. You get to do that only once. Because after that, the Empire is just going to equip every Star Destroyer with a gravity well generator. This is something they developed before the first Death Star. It's a device that creates a gravity well, which prevents ships from entering hyperspace as well as pulling them out of hyperspace. Great, so your entire arsenal of hyperspace weapons is now 100% useless. And trust me, I know how that feels. Nothing worse than spending millions on a new weapon to have it be beaten by some test subject in a potato. The final talking point I keep hearing about this is why didn't people develop this before? And I ask you who? Who would develop a weapon and use a weapon like this? When would they even use it?
The Republic? Nope, they are not into building weapons of mass destruction. I mean, they didn't even have a standing army until the Clone Wars. Not to mention, when they win the war, they want the Separatist planets to rejoin them. Using WMDs is a bad way to go about that. The Separatist Alliance? Also a big nope. That would be a huge waste of resources. Look at their tech with the droid army. They didn't make single-use items. Almost everything was made to be reused and have multiple uses. Even their missiles were designed to be reused. Remember buzz droids? They were designed to move from ship to ship after they tore them apart. Not just blow up on a single ship. Also, like the Republic, when the war is over, they want to continue to trade with them. The Empire. While they aren't above using WMDs, it is a waste of resources. Remember, the Empire uses prison and slave labor where it can instead of droids because it's cheaper and a more effective use of resources. The Empire is so cheap, they refuse to even put hyperdrives in TIE fighters. A fighter that size couldn't get this deep into space on its own. Who would they even use it against? The Rebels? Why? They have Star Destroyers and tons of TIE fighters, not to mention the Rebels are scattered across the galaxy. Finding them is the hard part. Destroying them is easy. That was the whole reason why the Emperor leaked the plans to the Rebels, so he could get them all in one place and destroy them. The Empire also likes projecting their power and reach. That's why they built the Death Star in the first place. Fear will keep the local systems in line. Fear of this battle station. Could the Empire have created large tungsten hyperspace rams to drop on planets? Sure it could have, but that would be a waste. Why do that when you can just blast it from orbit with your Star Destroyers or bombers? Look what they did to Mandalore. I mean, sure, you could go and retrieve the tungsten when you are done. But do you think the Empire is going to sit around after it destroys a planet to retrieve the tungsten rods? Hell no, they've got sh** to do. So who's left? Rebels. Just like the Old Republic, they aren't going to create WMDs. Not to mention, do you think they can afford to waste resources on that? Heck no, they're poor, especially compared to the Empire. Now I know what you're going to say. Using one hyperspace ram and taking out a fleet isn't a waste. Yes, it is. The size of the Empire is infinite compared to the Rebellion. The Rebels cannot win a war of attrition. This is why we never see the Rebels just going toe-to-toe -to -toe against Star Destroyers for the hell of it. The Rebels use hit-and-run tactics. They attack strategic targets because every battle might be the last one for the Rebellion. They avoid straight-on fights because they will lose. But let's say they did... And let's say they take out a fleet of 50 Star Destroyers. The Empire had over 25,000 Star Destroyers alone at the height of its power. That's not including thousands of cruisers, frigates, gunships, and the millions of TIE fighters. There is no way the Rebels could ever win a war like that. That's why they had to kill the Emperor. So that about wraps it up. As you can clearly see, in no way does hyperspace ramming break space combat in Star Wars. It only works in a few very specific situations and can easily be stopped if you're paying attention. To say that it does is incredibly uninformed and you should stop listening to angry YouTubers that say stupid stuff like that. Next up, we talk about weapons that actually break space combat. First on that list, ion weapons. Wait, there's a weapon that can completely shut down any ship. Well, there you go. Another thing that can stop hyperspace ramming. See you next time. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can be the person to say first in the comment section of the next video. Also, leave a comment about other topics you would like to see and what AI celebrity voice you would like to hear. AI Cave Johnson out.